chapter 1.5.4. Chapter 4 explains the basic principles of abstract power projection and why it's dysfunctional. Chapter 4 provides a deep dive into how and why humans use different power projection tactics than animals. The author provides a deep dive on different power projection tactics, techniques, and technologies employed by modern agrarian society. This chapter can be viewed as having two parts. Part one focuses on how humans create and use abstract power as a basis for settling disputes, controlling resources, and establishing pecking order. Part two focuses on explaining why sapiens inevitably revert back to using physical power as the basis for settling disputes, controlling resources, and establishing pecking order the same way other animals in the wild do. In other words, chapter four provides a theory about why humans try but never succeed at escaping from war. The chapter concludes with a discussion on how a strategic nuclear stalemate may place human society in a highly vulnerable position, which could be alleviated by a soft or non-kinetic form of war fighting. This sets up the reader for understanding the potential socio-technical and natural strategic implications of Bitcoin. <clears throat> the purpose of Chapter 4 is to highlight the complex socio-technical trade-offs and implications associated with different power projection tactics, techniques, and technologies employed by human societies. This chapter rigorously explores moral, ethical, ideological, and design decisions that people make when they use both abstract and physical power projection tactics. Across a long series of memos, the author summarizes the emergent behavior associated with these different types of power projection tactics using a constant comparative method. The point of this lengthy, lengthy discussion on human power projection is twofold. First, it illustrates how the subject of national strategic security is a complex, socio-technical, trans-scientific phenomenon that involves frustratingly unquantifiable questions related to ethics and design. Second, it highlights the glaring vulnerabilities and systemic security flaws of our existing systems of governance and resource control. The core concepts discussed in this chapter are highly relevant to follow on discussions about Bitcoin because the systemic security hazards identified in this chapter represent cybersecurity hazards too. This discussion is also designed to present the background needed to understand the so what of Bitcoin because it alludes to how substantial Bitcoin's impact could be on the organization of future human societies. The primary takeaway from this chapter is that humans need to find their own version of antlers that would enable intraspecies physical power competition while minimizing intraspecies injury.